Well, Case will get the ball to start play here in the third quarter, leading it by a score of 21 to 10. Jeff Schaefer will kick off for the University of Chicago Maroons. The Spartans 7 and 0 on the season, Chicago 2 and 4 as we start here in the second half. The kick is off by Schaefer, a very short kick. It'll be taken by Metalsitz at the 19 yard line to the 25 to the 30 and tripped up and tackled at the 33 yard line. And that's where the Spartans offense will come out. Case ranked 11th in the country in one poll. That's the American Football Coaches Association. <coughs> D3Football.com ranks the Spartans 13th in the country among Division III teams. David Wilson, Ed Doherty, Nick Stroud on the sideline. Kevin Welsh back at our studios. Great to have you with us today for Spartans football. 21 to 10, Spartans with the lead and the ball to start play in the second half. Derek Bush gets the carry, still on his feet across the 40 to the 45 across midfield and knocked out of bounds at the Maroons 44 yard line. It's a 23 yard run to start the ball game, or start the second half. And again, nothing fancy, that's what really was working earlier in the first half was just that simple sweep play, this time from the shotgun and Bush carried it around the right side couple of lead blockers out in front of him and pushed his way for almost 25 yards. I in the backfield with Checkin and Bush. Colasar and Nicely in the game lined up at wide receiver on the left. Nicely in the slot. They'll go back and hand it to Bush. He's hit in the backfield and drugged down. Nicely defended by the Maroons in there on the coverage. Justin Katarabic, that's the first time we've called his name today. Ed Katarabic, the sophomore out of Caledonia, Illinois three sacks, eight and a half tackles for losses this year. On that last play, that's where Dan Whalen needs to recognize. Chicago had 11 in the box. Whalen needs to recognize that switch off, check down to a hot receiver and possibly take a shot downfield. Nobody beyond five yards off the line of scrimmage for the Chicago defense. Homick and nicely on the left. Colasar is lined up on the right. Bush in the backfield. Whalen to throw for Homick and throws behind Zach Homick. That one hits the turf as Homick was ranging out near the case bench in the flat. Homick, the sophomore out of Chicago. Whalen rushed that pass again. Chicago very aggressive defensively, pushing that line of scrimmage, bringing guys into the box. Eight in the box at the time of the snap. On the previous play, Whalen needs to just kind of settle down, know that he's got another half a second before he gets rid of the football. Dan Whalen, the junior out of Willoughby South, rolls out to his left. He'll wing it downfield, and that's intended for Nicely, but too far in front as Nicely could not catch up to it. That brings about fourth down and 13 for the Spartans, and the punting unit will come on. That includes Dan Whalen. Whalen will punt this one away. Whalen's only punt of the ball game was that Short 22-yarder in the shadows of his own goal post in the first half. He's got the wind behind him now. You could see another Whalen 50-yard bomb. Whalen will set up at his own 40, and he gets the kick away, and it's a good one. Sailing back near the 15-yard line. It'll be caught back there by Joe Stoner, but he is immediately tackled. A late flag comes out on the play. Bobby Bott was down there defensively. DJ Sutka. Brad Paramore in on the tackle. This is in the area of a block in the back. It was right out in front of where the receiver caught the football. Well, they put the ball down at the 14-yard line, and then they'll mark off penalty yardage from there. But as of yet, no indication of who the penalty is against. The University of Chicago players standing over near their sideline, and it's going to go against Case. Some of the Case and players look shocked. And against Chicago, it's oh, offsetting. offsetting personal foul penalties. Offsetting personal foul penalties. Rich Doolin was about ready to blow his top there when the first call came out, but it is an offsetting penalty. And so the Maroons come out first and 10 from their own 14 yard line, 21 to 10 case, 11 point Spartans lead here. And here's Francis Adarqua, the freshman tailback again set up at quarterback. The snap goes to Adarqua, and guess what? He runs with the football, gets across the 15, stacked up, tackled at about the 17-yard line, a pickup of three. And Jeff Brown really stifled that play to start with. He showed blitz into one hole, then came on a run blitz on the opposite side of the, of the nose guard, and that's right where Adarqua ran into 
And so although Brown not credit with the tackle, he really created the log jam and nowhere to go for a dark wide of that formation. They do have three receivers in the football game. Wolf and Stoner on the right side. They'll go to Adarqua. He'll hand it off. This one is carried by Joe Steelman, and he has nowhere to go, and he's finally tackled back near the 10-yard line. That's going to go for a big loss here. It'll bring about a long third down for Chicago. And again, they're going to give him forward progress all the way to the 15-yard line. Well, and you're, you're right, Ed. They are marking it out uh, actually at the 16. So how that was a gain, I have no idea. However, that is the spot. No, no uh, big argument from the case uh, bench, although some of the coaches up here have a quizzical look on their face. Adarqua will stand back at the 10 to take the shotgun snap. He'll run it straight ahead. He hits Ben Klebina. Klebina brings him down short of the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth down for the Maroons with 12 minutes and counting here in the third quarter, 21 to 10 case. And Nate, Nate Williams, the left guard, had both arms outside of the shoulder pads of John Genovese as Genovese was attempting to make that tackle and still no flag come on. Ordinarily, you get a hand outside the shoulders of your defensive lineman, you're gonna get called for holding. Williams had him around Genovese's shoulders. They come after Verissimo, it's tipped. It'll bounce at the 30 yard line and roll back to the 37 and that's where it will be down in case again with a good push and pressure on the punter Ryan Verissimo the kick was tipped and it lands near the 30 yard line takes a maroon bounce and Jeff Brown in on that uh, block as well got a piece of it Brown's been all over the field this afternoon 11:31 to play here in the Third quarter, 21 to 10 case. Spartans back out there offensively. Dan Whalen with Greg Meyer to his left. They'll fake the handoff to Meyer. Whalen keeps it himself to the 35 to the 30 and out of bounds. Whalen short of the first down, but a good gain. Second down and short coming up for the Spartans. Let's go to the sideline and check in with Nick. Yeah, Kaldrick without a catch today, caught eight balls last week. They'll hand this one to Meyer, breaks through the line on his feet to the 20 to the 15, down to the 10, tackled at the five yard line. Greg Meyer with a 24 yard run, first and goal Spartans from the five. In case line three wide receivers up to the left, they also had the tight end to the left or the right side of the formation. The play came back to the weak side, to the left side, wide open as the secondary had shifted over into coverage for the wide receivers. Full house backfield for Case, first and goal, ball marked on the five yard line. They'll go and hand to Greg Meyer, reverses direction, tries to go back inside. They catch up to him and knock him down for a loss. And there on the coverage for the University of Chicago, John Emerson, the defensive end out of Okemos, Michigan. No gain for Meyer. First, uh, I should say, second and goal from the five yard line. 10.28 to go third quarter. Case up 21 to 10. Chicago winless on the road this year, 0-3. Four new wide receivers check in for Case. Kaldrick is in there in the slot on the right side along with Webster. Homick alone on the left side, checking as the lone man in the backfield. Colasar ranges far out wide to the right. Case on the five yard line of the Maroons. Whalen in the gun, takes the snap, drops back to throw. Sidesteps a pursuer, now stays on his feet, dives in for the touchdown. Dan Whalen with all receivers covered, runs it in himself. A five yard touchdown run for Dan Whalen and the Spartans extend the lead now to 27 to 10 with 9.57 to go in the third quarter. Well, Whalen put a move on Dexter McCauley in the backfield. McCauley went face first into the grass and was slow to get up. I don't know if he was more injured or more embarrassed of the move that Dan Whalen put on him. Dan, Dan Whalen scores his second rushing touchdown of the season. And now Sam Coffey on to try the PAT. It is up and it is good and the Spartans have 
a 28 to 10 lead here in quarter number three. We'll take a 30 second timeout back after this on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Twenty-eight to ten, the Spartans leading this football game here in the University Athletic Association opener here at Case Field on the University Circle campus. Case Field, of course, surrounded by the beautiful red brick dorms of Case Western Reserve University. Here's the kickoff from Sam Coffey. Clay Wolf takes it at the ten to the fifteen to the twenty to the twenty-five, straight up the middle. He's finally tackled near the twenty-seven yard line. Lisa Sala in there. Luis Gonzalez. And Brian Metalsitz in on the coverage for Case as the Maroons offense will come back out. The lead is now 18 for the Spartans. They'll stay without a traditional quarterback. Francis Adarqua on the day, 19 carries, 74 yards. It's a snap to Adarqua and then a cloud of dust if there was dust on the field. But he has been running it exclusively for the Maroons today. They'll snap it to him. He'll try and get around the right corner. Reverses direction back inside. Gets knocked down. And it's a loss as he is tackled by a couple of different Spartans. Jake May was in there, Ed. And again, you just wonder when and if Dick Maloney and his staff will pull out a new play to try to catch the Spartans unaware, but right now it's a Darkwood just running it straight up the gut. Well, he's going to go with the six linemen. Basically, Michael Emerson, the tight end, is a six lineman. A lot of uh, use of hands on the interior line by Chicago. Clay Wolf goes in motion. They will hand it to Wolf. He tries to break around the right side. Ben Klebina is there, hits him low, and stops Wolf in his tracks at the 25-yard line. And it looks like they will give him forward progress back to the line of scrimmage. Nine minutes to go here in the third quarter. Case leading a 28 to 10. Now here comes John Kiernan back in the ball game at quarterback for Chicago. A dark was stays in the game at tailback. They'll line up two receivers on the left, one on the right. That is Wolf on the right side. He's one on one with Bobby Bott. Chicago with the football. Case leading at 28 to 10 here at Case Field. Kiernan, the senior, goes back to throw, rolls out wide to the left side, fires for Wolf. It's caught, but it's short of the first down at the 35-yard line. They pick up eight, fourth down and two. And even though they're still in Chicago territory, Ed, do you feel it's too early to go for it on fourth down? It looks like they'll punt. Yeah, they'll have to punt in this situation. The way Case has struggled with turnovers today, Chicago's probably better off kicking the ball away and looking for something from their defense or special teams that'll shorten the field. Well, Sean Nicely is back to return this punt. He is standing at his own 30-yard line. Here is the punt from Verissimo. That's a good high spiraling kick. It will bounce and take a Chicago roll back near the 25-yard line. That's where they will down it. And the Spartans will come back out on offense, leading it by a score of 28 to 10. That ball hit Michael Emerson at the 35-yard line, hit him in the leg, and it rolled away. That ball should be spotted at the 35-yard line, not the 27. Yeah, it looked as if it did uh, skip off Emerson, but it was not detected by the officials. And the Spartans have the football at their own 27-yard line to start this drive. Eye in the backfield behind Dan Whalen. D.J. Sutka lined up on the right side of the line. Two receivers on the left. Whalen will take the snap, go back and hand to Bill Deitman. Turns around the right side, gets about a yard. He's hit, stacked up, and ended up being driven out of bounds over on the far side. Well, Case went with the sweep, but that time to the short side of the field. 
7.22 and counting here in the third quarter. David Wilson at Doherty, Nick Stroud on the sidelines. 18-point lead for Case. Whalen will set up in the shotgun. Tightman stays in the game behind Whalen. Whalen to pass, and he is going to have to reverse direction back toward the far side of the field. Guns it out of bounds, and that one was thrown right at Dick Maloney. They say Whalen was out of the pocket. No case receiver anywhere near where the ball landed. Third down and eight for Case. Well, I don't know if Whalen was outside the original tackle box. He had rolled so far to his left and then come all the way back to his right. In case with a break there. So no grounding call. Third down and eight from the 29-yard line. First down marker is at the 37-yard line. Whalen directs traffic. Four receiver set. Corey Chekin to Whalen's right. Whalen back to throw. Three-step drop. Now finds... Metal sits open at the 35 to the 40, 45, out of bounds at the 47-yard line. It's a first down as they pick up 18 as they hook up with the freshman, Brian Metal sits, who holds in his fifth catch of the day. Well, for Chicago, they're going with three down linemen, two linebackers, six defensive backs. In the zone coverage, one of the linebackers is backing in and one linebacker blitzing. A lot of voids underneath, about eight yards beyond the line of scrimmage, and Case has exploited that this year, or this afternoon. Sutka in the game at tight end. They'll hand to Deitman in the eye, turns the left corner, still in bounds as he knocks one man over and then gets driven out of bounds near the 35-yard line. And actually, they'll say he stepped out of bounds at the 37-yard line. A nice run by Deitman with Corey Checkin blocking in front, and the Spartans continue to move the football here on this drive, which started at the 27-yard line. They're now in maroon territory, first and 10. 6.21 to go here in the third quarter. Wayland calls out the signals, surveys the defense, will go back, keep it on the ground to Deitman. The sophomore out of Metter puts his head down, gets to the 35, he's driven back, picks up maybe two on the play. It'll be second down and eight for the Spartans. Just got a note here, Dave, the women's cross country team won the UAA championship today in Atlanta. So the women cross country under Kathy Lanise, it's their second UAA title in three years. They also won it back in 2006. The women's cross country team for Case currently ranked sixth in the country. The men this afternoon uh, not as successful. They finished fifth out of eight teams at the UAA championship. Dan Whalen asks for and gets a timeout. So the Spartans take a timeout. So will we. 5.35 to go here in the third quarter, 28 to 10 case. We'll step away for this break on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. football here this afternoon from Cleveland, Ohio. Dan Whalen back to throw on second down, loops it up for Holmick. He makes the catch at the 12-yard line and out of bounds. Second and eight from the 35, and Whalen with the nice touch just throws it up, and Holmick with a man right on him runs under it, makes the catch, Stumbles out of bounds. They mark him at the 11. Whalen identified the blitz. Chicago brought seven. He got rid of the ball quickly and went out to the one-on-one -on -one receiver, Homick, on the near side of the field. Three receivers set. Colasar and Nicely on the right. Nicely in the slot. Homick on the left. Derek Bush is in the backfield. Whalen will throw. Looking for Homick. Fires it in there, and it's incomplete as Homick goes down on his backside and cannot hang on to the football. Nice defensive coverage there for the Maroons. And it'll be second down and 10 from the 11-yard line. A lot of holes in that secondary for Chicago. 
Again, especially when they want to be aggressive and they want to blitz, they're leaving nobody deep over the middle. Even though the field is short because of where Case is at, there's still a huge void just down in between the hash marks outside the linebackers. Waylon in the shotgun will try and keep it himself, trying to get to the outside, steps through two defenders and gets to the eight-yard line before he is finally thrown down. Nice defensive play by Frank Chor to finally stop Waylon, who somehow tiptoed through two men and gets down close to the seven now. It'll be third down and six from the seven-yard line for the Spartans. They already lead it 28-10 to 10 with 440 to go here in the third quarter. Spartans ranked 11th in the country, 7-0, playing their conference opener today against the University of Chicago Maroons. Whalen goes back to throw, rolling right to the end zone, looking for Colasar, incomplete. And it will bring about fourth down and six for Case. And we'll see Sam Coffey come on, the sophomore, will set up for a field goal. Coffey today will be on for his first field goal attempt. He's five of eight on the season with a long of 44, which is his career high. And they will tee up this football at the 14-yard line. 24-yard attempt for Sam Coffey. The high snap. Colasar gets it down. Here's the kick. It is up. It is good. Sam Coffey with his sixth field goal of the season. This one from 24 yards out makes it 31 to 10 case. 420 to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout here on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. The kickoff by Sam Coffey, the return by Clay Wolf. He gets back out close to the 30-yard line, 20-yard return for Wolf. And the Maroons offense will come back out 31 to 10 with 414 to go here in the third quarter. Sam Coffey, a 24-yard field goal to extend the lead now to 21 points. Case led 21 to 10 at halftime. So they have put 10 points on the board here in the third quarter. Kiernan is still in at quarterback for the Maroons. He'll flip it out. That's caught over there by Joe Stoner, and he's tackled at the 40-yard line. A pickup of 10, and it should be good for the first down. Stoner makes the catch. The junior out of Chicago, Illinois. That's his first catch today, his 14th of the season. Had a career-high six receptions last week in the 26-14 loss at Denison. Just the second completion on the afternoon for the University of Chicago. Yeah, Wolf had the other in the first half. First and 10 from the Maroon 40-yard line. Kiernan rolling out, and he is going to be sacked as he goes down. A nice diving tackle by Lee Sasala in the backfield with Kiernan looking downfield. Sasala takes him out, and the Spartans record the sack, and it's a long second down. Well, the case secondary did a nice job just sticking with those receivers. A couple of crossing routes on the far side of the field. The secondary did a nice job of switching, similar to a, uh, a pick in basketball. Kiernan will work under center. Adarqua is in the backfield at tailback. 
They'll go back and hand to a dark row on a trap play. Gets across the 35. He's knocked down. Still on his feet, though. Avoids the tackles and gets out to the 38-yard line and never was tackled as he goes out of bounds. And they're going to mark him short and say his forward progress was stopped at the 36. I think that's a, uh, that's a mistake as well. Poor spot for Chicago, and Dick Maloney just goes right into calling the next play. Not a lot of argument about the spot, but I think Adarko had about three more yards than what he was credited for there. 36-yard line, the line of scrimmage right now, third down and 14. Spartans up 31-10. Spartans have won 18 consecutive regular season games, trying to make it number 19 today. Kiernan back to throw, steps through the pocket, fires downfield, and the closest man was Joe Stoner, but it's incomplete. There defensively, Mike Pelyak for the Spartans, and it'll be fourth down and 14 for Chicago. Punt coming up and nicely drops back to return this kick. The ninth punt of the afternoon that Case is forced. Nicely will stand at his own 30-yard line. The Spartans leading it by a score of 31 to 10. The snap back to Verissimo. He drops it, and then he gets a short kick off. It'll drift back to the 42 and land and roll out of bounds at the 39-yard line. And the Spartans will come out and take over. Let's go down to the Case sideline and check in with Nick. There on this upcoming uh, drive, and they were not out there on the last drive. So it looks like it's just another unique way to keep all of these talented receivers shuffling around out there on the offense. Right now, Kaldrick has checked in, lined up in the slot on the right side. Kolasar is wide right. Sutka tight on the left side of the line. Eye in the backfield with Chekin and Meyer. Whalen calls out the signals, takes the snap, goes back, deep downfield looking for Kolasar, and he has it knocked away at the very last second. Nicely defended by Chris Leamy, the cornerback out of Glen Ellen, Illinois. Knocks that pass away from Ryan Kolasar. Well, the... Maroons brought the house again, and nobody in the middle of the field. Whalen doing a nice job, again, of identifying that and just laying a ball out there where Cowder could go get it or Kolasar could go get it. Same, put enough, put same, enough air under the ball for it as well. Same formation here. They'll hand it to Meyer. He hits the pile and gets dropped at the 35-yard line. This will be a loss of four. So the Spartans trying to run that one straight up the middle. He ends up gaining nothing and losing three yards they'll give him the 36 yard line so a third down 13 now for the Spartans leading it by a score of 31 to 10 with 143 to go here in quarter number three great to have you with us today for Spartans football here on AM 1220 the word as well as case.edu Wayland will go back to throw looking downfield looking for Kolasar and Ryan Kolasar had not totally finished the route Pass was on its way before he turned around to locate the ball. It's incomplete. Fourth down and 13, and the Spartans will send Whalen back out there to punt this one away. That's a tough throw for even a professional quarterback or a Division I level quarterback to throw to a spot and have enough confidence in your receiver that he's going to get there. And Whalen just wound up and gunned it downfield about 15 yards, waiting for the break. And he threw too far out in front of his receiver. Whalen waiting on the snap. Low snap bounces to Dan Whalen. He gets the kick away. Not a good kick. End over end. It takes a case bounce, though, and will roll all the way down to the 23-yard line. And again, it's good to be Dan Whalen as the poor snap ends up in Case's favor as it rolls down to the 25, maybe the 23-yard line when they finally Mark the football. That ball went about 15 yards in the air and another 25 on the bounce. And Whalen officially going to get a 40-yard kick out of it. So 1.15 to go now in the third quarter, 31 to 10. Case leading it by three touchdowns here this afternoon at Case Field. Kiernan stays in. They have Wolf in motion. They'll hand it to the wide receiver, turning around the right side, and he is leveled by Bobby Bott. Well, that's the hit of the day. Jeff Brown there defensively as well. Rich Doolin there 
on the defensive coverage for Case as well. And Wolf now hearing bells after well, absorbing that hit. Well, I think Bott wants to get himself back mentally into the football game. And a couple of errors in the first half that led to 10 points for Chicago. And laying out a receiver is one way to do it for a defensive back. 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Kiernan will hand to Adarqua carrying the football as he has done now 22 times today. Dives ahead close to the 30-yard line. We'll see if they get another playoff. Right now, 25 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. Case has assumed control of this game, 31 to 10. They line up with the play clock in motion now, but just 12 seconds on the game clock. Kiernan will call out the signals. Five seconds left in the quarter, and now he says it's a no-go. They abort the last play of the third quarter, and that's it. Fourth quarter is coming up next. The Spartans leading this game by a score of 31 to 10. We'll be back with the all-important fourth quarter when we continue from Case Field after this on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Oh, we move on to the fourth quarter now. Maroons football, third down and three. Kiernan will drop back to throw, and it's incomplete, looking for Clay Wolf at about the 35-yard line. And it's fourth down and three. Just underway, fourth quarter, 21-point lead for Case right now, 31-10. to 10. David Wilson at Doherty, Nick Stroud on the sideline, Kevin Welsh back at our studios at the Salem headquarters in Independence. It's the tenth punt of the ball game for Chicago. It will be Sean nicely back to return this kick. He is standing at the 35-yard line of the Spartans. The snap back to Verissimo. They come after it, but he gets it away. Nicely will not field this one. It will take a maroon bounce, and it goes out of bounds near the 30-yard line, and the Spartan offense will come on. This is a very young Chicago team. 32 of 63 players on the roster are freshmen. Well, Dick Maloney saying before the game, it's one of the youngest teams he's ever been associated with. But a lot of experience for these underclassmen. Well, it's, it's, it's a whole rebuilding process for University of Chicago. They have not won a conference game since 2005. They're 0 and 6. Wayland back on the field with the Spartans offense, and he is going to be pursued deep behind the line of scrimmage and sacked. That may go down as the biggest loss of the season for the Spartans, as he was quickly run down by two Chicago defenders. The first man to him was Matt Sargent, the defensive lineman out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. And Wayland ends up tackled at the 14-yard line. That's a 17-yard loss. Second down and 27. Wayland will set up in the shotgun at about his own 10-yard line. Deitman is in the backfield. Four receivers set for the Spartans. Wayland takes the snap and will look to run it straight up the middle. Cuts it to the outside of the 20, to the 25, to the 30, out of bounds at the 34-yard line. So he loses 17 on one play, gains 20 on another, so his rushing average for the series is 1.5 <laughs> yards. Dan Whalen right up the middle. 
Got some good blocking, a big hole open. Third down and six, manageable now on third down for the Spartans, who lead it by a score of 31 to 10 here at Case Field at the Village at 115 on the Case campus. Very overcast right now. We had some sunshine earlier in the day, but still mid-50s for this game here at Case Field this afternoon. Whalen directing traffic at the line, takes the snap, goes to Homick over the middle and overthrows Homick. Whalen only had a second or two to throw that football and misses Homick. It's fourth down. <laughs> that, that pass mm -hmm. might have had some flame come off of it. Van Whalen really stepped into it and fired one over the middle to, to Zach Homick. An absolute laser beam that home we couldn't go out and get. Chris Leamy was there defensively for the University of Chicago, and Whalen will have to punt this one away. Van Whalen waiting on the snap as the Spartans will punt. This one drifting back to Joe Stoner. He will take it at the 27-yard line to the 30, 35. Tackled right there. DJ Sutka in there. On the coverage for the Spartans, Sutka not in the act yet today. Receiving, but records the tackle there on special teams coverage. And with 13-19 to go in this game, the Spartans lead it by a score of 31-10 to with the Maroons coming back on. I guess in basketball, when they have five players on the court, they would be the Maroon Five. <laughs> Here they're the Maroon 11. Football at the 35-yard line. University of Chicago football. Kiernan pursued by Jeff Brown. He goes down. A sack by Brown at the 27-yard line. That one will lose eight as Jeff Brown records the quarterback sack. Jeff Brown, the leading, sack, uh, leading tackler. Now with nine and a half sacks on the season. That loss may push the Chicago offense under 100 yards for the ball game. 12.42 to go in the fourth quarter. Kiernan back to throw. They'll hand it to Adarqua. He tries to turn it to the outside. Hit by Luis Gonsalves and tackled at the 25-yard line. Adarqua's helmet comes flying off, although he held on to the football. Well, Pelyak and Sasala were there first. He bounced off of those two, went further outside, ran into another case player before Luis Gonzalez wrapped him up. They lose three on that play, so it's third down and 20. Right now, 80 rushing yards on the day, Ed, for Chicago on 38 attempts. Cases outgained them on the ground, 142 to 80. In the football game, the quick out goes to Wolf to the 25, steps out of bounds at the 28-yard line. That well, picks up three. It'll be fourth and 17. And technically, that should go as a rush as it was a lateral pass. Well, the Spartans will get the football back as the punting unit comes out for UC. Fourth and 16. From the 29-yard line, nicely will stand at his own 40, waiting on this punt from Ryan Verissimo. Verissimo gets the snap, gets the kick away. High spiraling kick. Nicely will make the catch and fall down at the 40-yard line. And the Spartans offensive unit will come back on. More Spartans football coming up next Saturday afternoon at 12.05 as the Carnegie Mellon Tartans will come in to take on the Case Western Reserve Spartans here at Case Field. We'll have all of the play-by-play -play action for you here on AM 1220 The Word beginning at high noon next Saturday afternoon, November 8th, as University Athletic Association play continues next Saturday here in Cleveland. Whalen will set up in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left. They faked a Dightman. Whalen will keep it. Stiff arms a man, and he's drugged down at the 44-yard line. Whalen trying to get around Silamos, the defensive back, and did his best to ward off Silamos, but he finally got Whalen down at the 43. I can't quite figure out the spots of the 
officiating crew this afternoon. Yeah, they really have been all over the place today on both sides, so I guess somewhat consistent. <laughs> Whalen checks off at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers on the left side, Kaldrick and Webster in the slot. No single safety back for Chicago. Here comes the blitz. Whalen goes to Webster, makes the catch at the 45 to the 50, and he has the first down. Brian Webster makes the catch. That's his third grab today, and it's a first and 10 for the Spartans. With that alignment of Chicago and the way they want to bring everybody up on the line of scrimmage, if you could slide somebody straight down the seam along the, the hash marks, there's nobody within 15 yards of them at that point. First and 10 from midfield. Football resting right on the 50-yard line. Dan Whalen, the junior quarterback, calls out the signals. Takes the snap. Greg Meyer is in the backfield. He gets the handoff, hits the line of scrimmage, and now falls forward close to the 46-yard line. A pickup of four for Greg Meyer. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Nick Stroud. Well, guys, something I've noticed today is that the wide receivers for the Spartans are doing a lot of nice blocking that are setting off some nice runs on the uh, last series where Zach Homick dropped that third down pass. When he came out to the sidelines, he was actually getting praise for the previous play where he set a nice block that sprung that 17-yard quarterback draw from Dan Whalen. So it's something to keep an eye on. These receivers are taking a lot of pride in their blocking. Dan Whalen goes back to throw, rolls out to the right downfield for Kaldrick, makes the catch at the 20 to the 15, down to the 10 and tackled at the nine yard line. Well, the case offense isn't done yet. Averaging over almost 44 points per game this season. Tim Kaldrick is ninth catch of the season. And that one goes for 34 yards down to the 11. Although it, it looked like he was inside the 10 when he was finally tackled, <laughs> but they mark it back at the 11-yard line, first and 10. They can get a first down at the one-yard line. Whalen will go back and hand to Greg Meyer. Actually, that's Derek Bush. Puts his head down and makes for the goal line as he gets through, but he ends up being tackled near the one. You know, back to Cowdrick for a minute. His three touchdown receptions last week earned him UAA honors, Offensive Player of the Week in the conference with his three touchdown catches. It will be marked at the one yard line, 10 yard run for Derek Bush. Bush stays in the game right now at the one yard line. Sutka has checked in at tight end. Colasar and Kaldrick are lined up at wide receiver. Dan Whalen calls out the signals. Here is the snap to Whalen. They'll go to Bush. He dives forward. We'll wait on the signal to see if he got in. Bush goes over the top and it is going to be second down. He didn't make it in. With football left resting inside the one yard line. Second and goal for the Spartans. They lead it 31 to 10 right now with 8.35 to go here in the fourth quarter at Case Field. Same set. Two receivers on the left. Kaldrick in the slot, Colasar wide. Bush in the backfield. Whalen drops the snap and it's recovered on the fumble by the University of Chicago. John Emerson falls on the football and the Spartans are turned away as they commit their fourth turnover today. And on the one yard line, the Spartans give it up and Emerson recovers the loose ball for the Maroons. That's the second time today in the red zone that Case has committed a turnover. Football ends up on the four yard line as it's recovered. 8.19 to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, the Maroons will be pinned back deep, but they did keep Case out of the end zone. And John Kiernan, the senior, comes back out. So far, three out of seven for 22 yards today for Kiernan, who had an injured ankle last week in the game against Denison. They go to Adarqua, and Francis Adarqua is hit at the five-yard line, might have picked up one. It's second down and nine. Not sure the simple dive plays into the middle of the line are going to get Chicago back into this game. If they have any hopes of even being competitive at this point, they're going to need to stretch the field and throw it down to the wide receivers. Back to throw Kiernan from his own end zone. Hits Wolf with a pass at the 15-yard line. He's finally ridden down and out of bounds by Lucas Sasala. And the... 
play goes for very close to first down yardage, but maybe slightly short, Ed, maybe a half yard. We'll see. Nope, they say now to move the chains, it's a first down. No measurement, just send them along. It was very close, and they signal the first down right now, and the football marked at the 14-yard line, first and 10 for the Maroons. Clay Wolf today with his second reception. Snap goes back to Kiernan. They will hand it to Adarqua. He breaks through the line, gets out across the 25, and straight ahead running, gets out near the 28-yard line. A pickup of close to 14 for Francis Adarqua. He will be first in line at the Whirlpool. He has carried it 24 times today, and that will put him over the 90-yard mark, 92 yards for the freshman. Seven minutes to go, fourth quarter, 31 to 10 case. Here at Case Field, conference opener for both teams. Quick out goes to Wolf at the 35, out of bounds on the Case side of the field. At the 40, I should say the 38-yard line. He'll be short of the first down, though, Dave. Whoa. <laughs> well, they mark him out at the 38. And they're going to... Going to wave him forward with the chains. It's another first down for Chicago. So it is first down. Kiernan takes the snap under center. He'll flip it out on that backwards pass again to Wolf, and he dives ahead for about six yards out to the 45-yard line. Worked effective in their last series. They picked up a couple of yards here. Again, about a six-yard gain on that near lateral. Yeah, very close to being a backwards pass. Right now that is a rule to forward pass to Wolf for nine yards. Second down, four. Kiernan will go back, hand to Adarkwa, up the middle. And he dives past the 45-yard line, gets out near the 47. They needed to make the 48 for a first down. So it is third and one now for the University of Chicago, and time not on their side right now, Ed, with 5.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. Case leading it by 21 points, 31 to 10. Kiernan takes the snap, quick drop out to the sideline. It is caught out there, and that's Joe Stoner hauling it in for a first down at midfield. In fact, they mark him ahead to the 49-yard line of Case. A lot of these short routes for the Spartans over there, for the... Uh Maroons on this drive. At some point, I wonder if one of the defensive backs, either Bond or Gonsalves, will attempt to jump one of these routes, step in front of a pass from Kiernan. So Kiernan will work from the shotgun now on first down from the Case 49-yard line, rolls out, wings it deep downfield, a man is open. Catch is made at the 10 to the 5, and it is a touchdown. Jay McGovern, his first catch of the day, McGovern with his 16th reception of the year, his first touchdown, the 6'2 junior out of Milan, Michigan, goes the distance on a 49-yard touchdown pass from John Kiernan. Wow. McGovern got a couple of steps and just ran under the floater from Kiernan and sprinted to the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Verissimo will try the PAT. The kick is on its way, and it is good. That makes it a 31-17 game with Case holding the advantage here in the fourth quarter. We'll step away for this 30-second timeout. Back with more in a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Fall victim to the long touchdown reception by Jay McGovern. 
McGovern racing down the near sideline, and Kiernan hit him with a pass in stride for a 49-yard touchdown. And the Spartans lead now, cut to 14, 31-17, two touchdown game right now with five minutes and six seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans with the all-hands team on and stacking up over on the far side to try and defend the onside kick. Joe Schaefer will attempt the onside kick to get the ball back for the Maroons. Here is the kick. It bounces deep, high hop, out of bounds over inside the 40. And wow. they had a couple of guys in the neighborhood to try and jump up there to get it. But after that initial bounce, it was too high and out of bounds. And the Spartans will have it near the 40-yard line. Well, last touch by a Maroon player as he went up to corral it. Couldn't do it. Case will take over at the 41-yard line. Case, four turnovers today. They've turned into all 17 points for the Chicago Maroons. Case with 21 first downs and the Maroons 11 so far today. The Spartans will come out. Dan Whalen directing traffic as they get the formation set up. Colasar and Nicely line up on the left side. They're the only two receivers, nicely in motion. Meyer in the backfield behind Wayland takes the snap, goes back, hands to Meyer, the Florida native, and he falls down at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second down and 10 for Greg Meyer, who has a touchdown run today that came back in the second quarter. Case led this game 21 to 10 at the half. Right now, 31-17. Leading the University of Chicago today in the conference opener here at Case Field. Case 7-0, trying to keep the unbeaten string alive. They'll go back and fake a handoff to Meyer. Whalen rolls out to the right, looking downfield, gets rid of it. Cowdrick, the intended target, but it's well out of bounds. And it's third down and 10 Spartans. Well, the clock will stop with that incomplete pass. That's the one thing that Case doesn't want to see happen today. At this point, leading by 14, those four and a half minutes can't take off the clock fast enough. Case has taken a timeout here in the second half. They have two left. More importantly, Chicago with all three of their timeouts left here in the second half. Whalen from the gun. Two receivers left, one right. They go to Homick on the right side. Has some good blocking in front of him by Sutka. Dives past Sutka and gets down to the 30-yard line. A pickup of near 11, and it should be good for the first down. And it is. First down, Spartans, as Whalen hooks up with Homick, and DJ Sutka really sprung Homick there with a good block. Zach Homick with his fourth reception of the day, now up to 55 yards today for Homick, the Chicago native. Sutka stays in the game on the right side. Colasar drops out wide left. Eye in the backfield with Checkin and Meyer. Case up by 14. Under four to play here in the fourth quarter. Whalen will keep it on the ground and go to Meyer. He has running room on the right side. 25-20, 15-10 to the five. Still on his feet. Touchdown! Greg Meyer. 31-yard touchdown run for the Spartans. It's 37-17. You know, that may have put the nail in the Chicago coffin. Any thought they may have had of coming back in the ballgame based on their last touchdown, Case responded. Chicago with an eight-play, 96-yard drive. Case comes right back, 41 yards of their own, and throws seven on the scoreboard. So the Spartans extend the lead now, and Sam Coffey back out for the PAT. Colasar will hold. Here is the snap and the kick. It is up. It is good. Coffee makes it a 38 to 17 case lead. 343 to go in the football game. We'll be back with more after this on the Spartans Broadcasting Network.
Spartans will prepare to kick off. 3.43 to go here in the fourth quarter. Sam Coffey puts the right foot into it, end over end kick, drifting back to the 13 yard line. It'll be taken by Clay Wolf. He brings it back to the 20, 25, out near the 30 yard line. And he'll be down at the 29. That's where the Maroons offense will come on. And it's really all over but the shouting right now at 3.38 to go in the football game, 38-17. That run by Meyer, as you suggested, really might have put Case over the edge as they extend it now back out to a 21-point advantage here at Case Field. Maroons come back on, and Kiernan will continue at quarterback. Adarqua in the backfield. Kiernan will roll out to throw. Looking downfield, has time, still has time. Now will flip it out of bounds as the coverage finally gets to him. Lucas Sasala was there defensively, putting the pressure on John Kiernan. Greg Meyer today, eight carries, 67 yards. And I believe that may be a high for a Spartans rusher for a single game this year. Dan Whalen has rushed for 37 yards. Derek Bush, 35. Bill Deitman, 31. Check in 18. Meyer, two touchdown runs today. A dark goal will carry it around the right side. He's wrapped up by Bobby Bott and ridden out of bounds. Clock stops with 3.24 to go here in the fourth quarter. 38 to 17. Case leading it here over the University of Chicago today at Case Field. So far today, Dan Whalen, 20 of 36, 252 yards, one touchdown pass. 3.12 to go. Clock continues to move now, third down and nine for the University of Chicago. Back to throw, Kiernan rolls left, throws it out of bounds, intended for McGovern, and incomplete. Fourth down and nine as the Maroon punting unit comes back out. Sean Nicely will come out to return this punt. Nicely returning to the lineup today. After sitting out last week with a sore hamstring, four catches today, 63 yards. He had not had any receptions in either of the last two games. Did not play last week. And so nicely makes a nice return to the lineup today. He has caught one touchdown pass. High kick. And nicely will drop the football. It's loose, picked up by the Maroons but they are going to say it's a penalty. The fair catch had been signaled for by Nicely. It hit him in the pads and then he was hit. And so now Chicago questioning whether the fair catch was made uh, or signaled by Nicely. The officials talking. I did not notice Nicely waving his hand, but he may have done so when the ball was in the air. And now they're, going to say, now they're going to say it's Chicago football. The ball was picked up by Mike Emerson, and he was rumbling toward the end zone and then stopped when the flag came out. If I were the Chicago team, I would be upset that that play was, was whistled and stopped with a flag. And if the K-Staff wanted a halo or a interference call, has nicely made the fair catch. At any rate, it's a turnover, and Kiernan back out with the offense, throws it wide of his intended target, Clay Wolf. It's incomplete, second down and 10. The football on the 34-yard line. It'll go down as a turnover, and that is Case's fifth of the day. That's their total for through seven games this season. And they have not forced one out of Chicago who was minus three coming into the football game. Second down and 10 from the Case 34-yard line. The Spartans leading it 38-17. to 17. Kiernan calling out the signals, takes a high snap in the shotgun, wants to throw downfield. Middle of the field, catch is made as it's hauled in there by the tight end, Mike Emerson. Emerson, his first catch of the day. That's big yardage all the way down. Inside the 10-yard line, they'll mark it at the 8. Just right down the seam. 
big hands and somebody we haven't seen all afternoon. Emerson traditionally a blocker. Emerson is eighth catch of the season. Kiernan will work under center now. Two receivers on the left, one on the right. That's Stoner over there on the right side. They'll hand it on a misdirection play up the middle to a Adarkwa, but he has tripped up, gained a yard on the play. It'll be second down and goal. A timeout is taken by the University of Chicago, and we'll take one as well as they talk things over with 2.19 to go here in the fourth quarter, 38-17. to 17. Case leading it back after this on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. to go here in the fourth quarter. Chicago operating inside the 10. Kiernan will throw for the end zone. Diving catch by Clay Wolf. It's a touchdown for the Maroons. Clay Wolf, his second touchdown of the day, his seventh catch. And this one goes for seven yards, and the Maroons hit the end zone again. And it's now 38-23. to 23. You know, for the first time this season, Dave, I'm sitting here thinking that Sunday and Monday, the coaches might have something to watch on film and make adjustments as the UAA action goes along. The first seven games, for the most part, other than maybe the first half against Worcester. Verissimo kicks through the PAT. It is good, and it's 38-24, to 24, back to a 14-point lead for Case. 2.15 to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be back with more after this 30-second timeout on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. On we go in the fourth quarter. Spartans leading at 38 to 24, 215 to go here in the fourth quarter. You can expect another onside kick attempt by the Maroons. The last one by Jeff Schaefer was not bad as it went bouncing there, Ed, past that 10 yard mark, which is exactly what you want to put it up for grabs. And the only player to get a hand on it was a Chicago Maroon. Deflected it out of bounds. So they'll set up for the onside kick again, and here we go. Two possession game right now, 38-24 case. Here's the onside kick, nice bounce, and this is going to be knocked away by Sean Nicely and out of bounds. Great play by Nicely. That was about to settle into the hands of one of the Maroons' coverage players, and Nicely broke up that play just like he was a DB. Yeah, he came over and just batted it away. So the Spartans will have it, thanks to the nifty Worked by nicely there on the sideline. Notice Jeff Brown out there on the onside kick coverage team. Brown out there, not out there for his hands. He's out there to blow somebody up. 2.12 to play here in the football game. Joey Baum has checked in at quarterback right now for the Spartans. So Baum replaces Whalen. Final two minutes here. 38-24. Case leading it by 14. They go to Deitman straight ahead. Nowhere to go. He is hit and dropped for a loss. That'll go down as a two-yard loss with two minutes to play. Clock continues to move. Two timeouts left for the University of Chicago. Dick Maloney in his 15th season on the Chicago sideline, 71-63, and four-time UAA Coach of the Year. 
Maloney with a long history. He's been in the Ivy League. He's been in the CFL. Graduate of UMass Boston. Baum takes the snap. He'll go back and hand up the middle. This is Deitman again. Picks his way forward out close to the 35-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. Third down case. Timeout taken by the Maroons. Third down and eight for the Spartans following this timeout. A reminder that we'll be on the air next Saturday afternoon at noon for a 12.05 game against Carnegie Mellon as they will make the trip over from Pittsburgh to take on Case here. It'll be the final regular season home game for the Spartans. They'll finish the season November 15th in a game at Washington University in St. Louis. We hope you can be out in person, bring your radio along, follow the action here on WHK, AM 1220 The Word. And the Spartans will be looking if the score holds here today for their 20th consecutive regular season win next Saturday. They'll hand it up the middle. This is Deitman, and he is hit in the backfield and dropped another loss on the play as that one is handled by Justin Katarabic defensively. And again, the Maroons use the timeout to stop the clock with 1.22 to play here in the fourth quarter. That's their final timeout, so they cannot stop the clock again. It's fourth down and nine. Football is marked at the 36-yard line. I don't think Sam Coffey is going to attempt a 53-yard field goal here. Not into a breeze either. So the Spartans will punt, and the Maroons will get the ball back, but they cannot stop the clock. Down two touchdowns. So an uphill climb for Chicago. See if Maloney has anything in his bag of tricks on the return. Joe Stoner is back to receive the kick. Dan Whalen comes back in to punt this one away. 38-24 case, 122 to go here in the fourth quarter. Here is the snap to Whalen. They come after the kick, but he gets it off. Stoner is asking for the fair catch and makes it at the eight-yard line. So they'll bring the offensive unit out, nice. see if they can come up with a couple of big plays here at the final 116 of the fourth quarter. Nice solid kick from Dan Whalen. Didn't try to do too much with it, just simply got it up in the air high enough that Chicago was forced to call for the fair catch. So ready for the first play of the drive. John Kiernan is back out. Case with the two touchdown lead right now, approaching a minute to go in the football game. Kiernan will throw for the sideline, gets it to Wolf, and he drops the pass. Wolf was trying to get out of bounds and did not get proper hold of the football. Second down and 10 from the eight yard line. They lost five seconds there. Well, they are hoping right now for lightning to strike and then get the onside kick for an opportunity to try and tie the game, but not a favorable position right now for the Maroons back at their own eight-yard line. Not impossible, but uh, their chances of winning are truly on life support. There was a penalty against Chicago that is declined. Second down and 10. 1-11 to go here in the fourth quarter. Coming up after the game, Nick Stroud will have post-game reaction on the field. So we hope you'll stay tuned for those interviews on our post-game show. Back to throw. Kiernan hits Wolf with a pass right in the middle of the field across the 10. So I think at this point, perhaps they are just playing out the string here. Threw it right over the middle for Wolf. Had no chance to get out of bounds. They line it up quickly. 50 seconds left. High snap to Kiernan. He will throw again near the sideline. Looking this time for McGovern. And a flag comes out. And it's going to be a pass interference call against the Spartans. So for whatever reason, the Spartans make contact with Wolf. That will move it ahead. It'll be a spot fall. Being under 15 yards. 
but an automatic first down and it stops the clock. 38-24, the Spartans with the two touchdown lead. Kiernan the quick route to Wolf over the right side, across the 20, down near the 24 yard line. Clock continues to move, that's short of the first down. A lot of activity on the interior line between the Chicago seven up front and the three or four for Case. There was some words exchanged earlier in this game. Kiernan rolling back, finds a outlet receiver, middle of the field, that's Stoner across the 30. It's good for the first down. That stops the clock with 18 seconds left while they move the chains. The Spartans about to collect their 19th consecutive regular season win as Kiernan spikes the ball to stop play. Second down and 10 with just 15 seconds left. Dick Maloney still coaching over there on the sideline. Kiernan back in action today after missing most of last week's game. We saw Marshall Oyam for just a few moments. Back to throw, John Kiernan, the senior. Deep drop, throws downfield, intercepted by Bobby Bott, his sixth interception of the season. Still on his feet at the 25, knocked out of bounds with two seconds left in the football game. Bott makes the interception, and for Bobby Bott, who had a couple of fumbles today, that's a great way to end the football game here this afternoon. Yeah, a little bit of redemption for the defensive back from midview. So all that's left now is to take off these final two seconds. And the Spartans will take a knee here, and that will do it. Joey Baum kneels, and the ball game is over. 38-24. to 24, The Spartans record the win here today against the University of Chicago Maroons in the University Athletic Association opener here at Case.